they're part of an effort to control what you believe by controlling the flow of information over social media. I'm trying, they're trying to control what you believe. <laughs> That's our friend, Jason Goodman. My name is Marcus Conti, reporting. Going to take a deep dive today. Watch out, watch out. Shit's going to get deep. <laughs> so um, that's our friend Jason Goodman. And uh, today I want to talk about the Jenny Moore murder mystery. And uh, look, it's been a month, right? And I, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, the, the mainstream kind of uh, law enforcement drags their feet and they take their time and they, they reveal all their cards. Other, an investigation like this takes time because you have to... You have to, um, you know, you got to turn the lights on and see where the cockroaches run, right? So there's a lot of cockroaches running around right now. And, um, you know, there's plenty of bait that's been left for them. And a month later, still, a lot of the, quote, suspects, players in this scenario uh, are still kind of, uh, kind of deep in hiding. So let's just talk about it now. We got to we got to talk about the players. There's Jason Goodman. There's George Webb. There's uh, Nathan Eliftavale has been mentioned over and over again. I'm going to play a bunch of clips from Jason and uh, George Webb, and you, you'll decide because it's it's um, it's still an open bag, right? This this look. There's three possible outcomes of the Jenny Moore murder mystery. Number one, she was murdered because she was deeply involved with. The investigation of Bill Clinton child rape, right? There's a there's a child and it was raped, and Bill Clinton raped the child, right? And Jenny Moore knew about it, and as the story goes, had actual evidence, actual video evidence of this person who made these allegations, right? And the only person that has that information, as we understand it, is Thomas Paine of Thomas Paine Productions, Mr. Mr. True Pundit has, in theory, or allegedly has, that recording of the child testifying and saying that Bill Clinton raped him as a child. We still haven't seen that yet. It's a month later. Still waiting. Jason has confirmed it. Thomas has written about it. So we'll get back to that. So I don't know how many pr uh, people are familiar with a series of videos that I've done with a guy named Marcus Conti. Now Marcus is the New York Department of Sanitation Enforcement Officer who became a whistleblower and started a lawsuit against the Department of Sanitation. And I had interviewed Marcus a couple times. He's a crowdsourced viewer, familiar with me and George. Uh, but I never heard George talk about him and I never heard George have him on his show or help him promote his lawsuit or whatever various things he wanted to promote and I found it very confusing that Marcus went last week or a couple weeks ago maybe like three four weeks ago on to lift the veil so there you go Jason there's George Webb who lived with Jenny Moore in the same hotel for months um, there's Robin Gritz who is the outside kind of card, right? Was was a friend, but then it turns out was she really a friend? She had uh, she had connections and she was in a CIA think tank, and none of these guys, these deep investigative journalists, Jason, George, or Thomas Paine, or even Jenny herself, no one knew that she she was in this think tank with you know a CIA think tank. So who was she? Who is she? Who is she? Who was she? All right. So there's, there's, that's, and, <clears throat> and of course, Thomas Paine himself. So there's, there's no, um, that's scenario number one. She was murdered because of what she knew, right? What she knew about this murder and what she was about to disclose. The other part of it is that she was murdered because of a, 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 a triangle, a, a love triangular ego-driven uh, scenario <clears throat> with players all competing for market share and, and, and the cutthroat world of the new internet, right? Chopping each other up at every, every chance they can, right? Pretending that they're friends, right? 
So something I've been talking about for quite a while is this notion of maybe less than honest people trying to control the information sphere in the social media world. And I think we know who these people are. I want to talk about them a little bit because they're up to something. And in that scenario, they fall in love. Whether it's gay love, I, I don't know. I mean, George Webb, I know you think this is funny, but it's actually, you gotta, fl you gotta flush it out. You have to talk about it. You have to talk about it, right? So George, George Webb lived on Jason's couch for a number of months. You remember that? He, 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 was on, he lived in George's house and in the West, in the West Village, actually Chelsea right, in Manhattan, that's probably the gayest neighborhood in, in America. There's more gay men, you know, per square block in Chelsea where Jason lives than anywhere in America. And probably in the world, right? There's 100,000 gay men that live in Jason's building. Right? So, so Jason lives in this heavily concentrated gay area. And here's, here's George coming along. And, oh, he's so, so handsome and he's so famous. Right? And, he lives in, and he's living on Jason's couch. Living in Jason's house, park, park, parks his car in Jason's garage. Jason's got some money, he made some money back in the day. You remember? He's a Hollywood guy. So, Jason's taking care of his 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 man. Right? And you know, George George is a little strapped for money. Jason Jason feeds him, takes him to the restaurant, shows him around New York. He's living in Jason's house. Uh, oh, George got George got thrown in jail for for some shit, right? And Jason flies out to rescue him and pays the bail. So, you know, so, and both of them are single male, single men, right? Both single, both in their, George in his 50s, you know, Jason, the younger Jason is in his 40s, right? And you got Quinn Michaels, you know, Quinn Michaels, Quinn Michaels, or Jason flying all over the country to visit Quinn Michaels. I right? go to Vegas, he's saw him in LA. It's all over the place, right? Now, people might have seen my only on Patreon show this Saturday with Quinn Michaels. I just think it's really funny that as Quinn reveals information from the book Mr. Leakey, is it possible that Quinn Michaels is right about everything he's saying in Mr. Leakey? Uh, now, the other thing I wanted to add about the conversation with Quinn on Saturday. What that means is at the beginning of, of human intelligence, you had two people, so, so to speak which can be classified as two nodes. No women. There's no women. I mean, we, we, uh, we, everybody thought that Jason uh, had a thing with Trish in it, it Trish the Dish. Remember that? That turned out to be nothing. And I, I know that to be true, that there's, there was nothing. Nothing. Right? That, was a, that, was a dead, that was a dead angle. So, so was George and Jason, are they, are they or were they gay lovers? It is a possibility because when you see the video that I'm going to play, the, the behavior is just, it's just irrational. It's just, it's, it, it's ridden with guilt, guilt. I mean, who am I? I'm just a guy, right? I told all of them that, well, you know, basically what I was doing. I was investigating, you know, a murder mystery. That's, that's all. I didn't even tell them that I did. I did my own videos and they, they caught on to what I was doing. And Nathan uh, at Lift the Veil kind of picked up on it. But, but the point is that, that they're running scared. Right? They're running scared. Why are they so, why are they so defensive and, and, and nervous? Especially what Lift the Veil, what Nathan says about these two characters and any involvement. Like why, why is Conti on Lift the Veil talking to him? And why is Conti coming to, to D.C. to talk to George? And... It, it just it just reeks of some somebody hiding something. What are they hiding? Was it w was I about to discover? Are they attracted to me? Let's talk about that. Am I look look how handsome I am? Look, I got beautiful hair, beautiful eyes, beautiful big ass teeth, right? They, maybe they maybe they maybe they're 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 gay lovers. They wanted they wanted me. They saw me as like the piece of you know piece of ass. You know, fuck you know Quinn Michaels. Get rid of that guy. Let's, let's take let's go let's get some Conti. Maybe, right? Am I gay? No, I'm not gay. I'm not, I'm not gay at all. 
but but the point is that it is it is a possibility where romance and love and 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 ego and and these sorts of things kick in and people do like crazy shit you know they start chopping each other up as you saw right so i really didn't spend a lot of time the last month and a half with uh uh, task force with Jenny Moore. The big news there is I made an incorrect statement earlier because I thought that Jenny was still on medication. And uh, what Not Your Turn to Burn just told me was that she was off all medication. Um, she was uh, kind of had some withdrawals when she when she got off the Oxycontin, but at the end she had no medication um, before she came back to this hotel. So that's number one, right? There is there's a murder that occurred because of of Jenny Moore's exposure of the situation with Bill Clinton, or she was murdered because of this sort of gay tr love triangle where where was George actually sleeping with Jenny? Well, if he wasn't, then there's other there's other combinations of 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 uh, love in there and those two that the one that i'm talking about now with jason and george has to be talked about or you can't leave that one off the table right was she murdered for one of those two reasons if not then the other scenario is she is still alive right now a month later there's no evidence to suggest that she is still alive Right. All we have is a police report that says that she's dead. Right. That a body was removed from the hotel on that day. Right. So that is a scenario, though. That's one of the three that she is still alive, and she was savvy enough to get away. Right. Somehow she's still alive. Maybe she's in L.A. laughing at us all right now. Who knows? Right. But it is a possibility. And as a month has passed, that possibility is getting less. And less and less because, you know, people are clumsy. People, it's hard to hide yourself like that. Or is it? I don't know. And the final one, the final possibility of the three is that uh, she, she accidental overdosed. Right? So, because according to George Webb, she was off medications and George is not really, you know, a reliable source because the story changes over and over again. It's like imaginary, right? right? But, but in there is there is enough evidence to suggest that she was she was she was taking oxycotton uh, or some kind of narcotic for her back pain because she had rods in her back and she was in an accident. Whatever the story is, right? She had she was on oxycotton. She had an opioid habit, right? And then she kicked that habit, and and then and then um, she was she she was jonesing for a while. <laughs> she she went through withdrawals, according to George, right? But when someone's in pain like that, right? Here's what happens with heroin and opioid addiction: the way people die is because they stop doing it, right? And say their dose was you know two pills, right? And they haven't done it in a long time, right? And then suddenly the pain comes back and they take those two pills and their immunity to those two pills goes away and it kills them, right? So accidental, accidental overdose, not accidental suicide, accidental overdose. Was it suicide? That, that, I think that's completely ruled out. I don't, I don't see that as a possibility, but accidental overdose where someone has a, has a, a you know, a fentanyl patch and and it's a hot day and they, they instead of using the, the the 10 milligram patch they put on the 30 milligram patch and it kills them right is that possible yes it's possible possible accidental overdose then all this stuff isn't even funny anymore even interesting it's just the person that overdosed it is a possibility that is a possible scenario so don't get your hopes to top you know we would all love to well, I don't know if we'd love to believe that it was it was in fact a murder, but it makes for it makes for a more interesting story, I guess. I, I don't know, but uh, so those are the three possible outcomes. You now know the you now know the players, and that they are running scared. Gay gay love triangle, romance, triangular killing, 
you know, reporter assassinated by the by the deep state for for Clintonesque information, or simple accidental dumb overdose, right? Or or I mean, look, they all all of these all of these scenarios have ramification because if she if she was let out the back door, right? If she walked out, right? And George is lying, and Jason is lying, and 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 Thomas Paine is lying. They made this whole freaking story up to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. That's heavy. That's heavy. Their credibility, all of them, out the window. Goodbye, goodbye, Mister Mister Oracle George. Goodbye, Jason. Uh, you guys, uh, Thomas Paine. Right? If you guys legitimately, you know, missed that or covered it oh that's just as bad as killing her <laughs> well maybe not the reason i'm pointing these guys out is not to create fights among youtubers but i believe it's possible and i've said this many times that there is a network of so-called youtube influencers who are trying to control what people think and believe by creating news according to them and they put out these stories and they corroborate them amongst each other with, uh, you know, anonymous posts from 4chan that are then reported on by really unreliable sources like Lift the Veil. I do not consider Nathan to be honest or reliable. He always seems to be up to something tricky. And the other thing I've noticed in terms of patterns is, you know, we've got George Webb suddenly advising people to go and, uh, well, advising Marcus to meet with him at the News Museum in Washington, D.C. George loves Marcus all of a sudden. And Marcus is a street reporter. I didn't know that. I thought Marcus was a sanitation worker who had been fired and who had a lawsuit against the New York Department of Sanitation that he lost, who was in desperate need of work and money. Huh. I wonder if that's a way to get on Lift the Veil and to interview George about the strange death of Jenny Moore. There are still a lot of unanswered questions about that. I don't know that much about it. I don't have that much information about it. And other people are covering it. George seems adamant uh, about covering it, even though apparently the family doesn't want him to do that. I just think it's very interesting. People should watch that and they should keep an open mind about the fact that I suspect both of those guys have some sort of angle going. Because this is a pattern. George tells people to watch Lift the Veil. George tells people to watch Marcus. This is in some way lending credibility to Marcus. And this is the same thing George has done when he told everybody to watch Dave and Defango. How humorous they are. How funny they are. This is how these guys push out their fake, bogus, lying stories. People remember in March I interviewed Marcus right here in this thing. We got the uh, Supreme Court building over here. Let's take a look at that. It's an interesting building for sure. But uh, I think people should watch this Marcus George interview with a great deal of skepticism. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. I think you should be very wary of anything either of those guys might tell you because I, for, I just don't trust them. I don't trust either of them. I think they are working for some unseen purpose. And I think George is very skilled at saying things that sound complimentary, but are intended to plant some piece of information that gets you thinking about something. You know, oh, Jason's a great guy. He's a million dollar guy. Did you notice how many people took that to mean that Jason has earned a million dollars from YouTube? I had the interview with Marcus Conte earlier today. He's kind of like the latest person to come to Washington, uh, what I call the Mr. Smith comes to Washington kind of syndrome, which is I've exhausted all my options locally. I've exhausted all my state options. I've all the institutions I believed in are crumbling. They're corrupt. I need to come to Washington. I need to see this place. I need to make a final appeal. This, I saw the same thing in Jenny, uh, over, uh, uh, a year ago and I saw the same thing in myself uh, more a little bit more time than that um, I think there's something special even though everyone said oh Marcus Conte stabbed you in the back as soon as you were done with the interview 
But this is what these guys want you to think. I suspect there's something going on between Lift the Veil, Dave Acton, who Nathan was very aggressively pursuing when he was in Mount Shasta, according to Quinn. I suspect those guys are up to something. So people should watch that interview with great care. I think it's coming on in just about 18 minutes. It all seems very carefully coordinated to me. Meet me here, they're making videos back and forth. They're following this telecomics guide that Quinn was talking about. And uh, let's uh, tune in and see where this Marcus Conti, George Webb interview goes. We'll have to see. It's interesting. Very curious. And there's one more thing, right? With Jason Goodman, right? I there's um he had said that he 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 makes it seem like he discovered me or something, right? But and I was on Jason's show twice. Right? Here's the other mysterious part of Jason, right? <clears throat> Throughout all of this 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 uh, video that you that you're watching, right? Or about to watch. You see Jason say that Marcus worked for the Department of Sanitation. Who is Marcus? I thought he was some poor sanitation worker, blah, 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 right? But what you don't know is that he, inter we, we had a, from the first time I was on the show, we, we sat in, in uh, Madison Square Park in the, the, you know, George Webb's favorite park with the cuckoo clock, you know, and we sat there and that's where the court, the, the first appellate court, the court that I was fighting in as a pro se, uh, pro se um, claimant against the city of New York, right? And that was the first time I, I, Jason became interested in, in the story that I was involved in, right? And then another time was the latter time when, when I actually took the, when, when there was an appeal on the table and we were waiting, uh, we were, they were actually, the judges were actually inside making a decision on this case, which turned out to be against me, right? But that's not the, that's not the point we're arguing right now. But there's a third time. There's a third, there was a third interview, right? No one's ever saw it. You know why? I'll tell you what happened. This is what happened. So, and I can, I can prove it. I have all the documents. I don't have the video because I, because Jason videoed it and then didn't air the video, right? But <clears throat> I have the, you know, our email conversations. That's not the point. So, so I'm running for the United States Senate, right? So I say, I called, I called Jason. I send them an email. And we make a deal. I said, Jason, you know, come out to, you know, Washington Square Park. We'll do it by the Washington statue, right? We'll shoot by the Washington statue. And I'll, I'll announce my candidacy for the United States Senate. I'll say there, right? right? So he shows up. I show up. It's, a, it's, it's like 7 o'clock one evening in the summertime. And, and, uh, and we, do, we do an hour an hour conversation in front of the George Washington statue. And I tell him all this stuff, right? All about running for the Senate and, and, um, and he didn't do it live. He didn't, he didn't release that piece live. But in that discussion, I tell him that I'm, that who I am and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and that I'm running for the Senate and I'm, you know, and that's, that's the motivating force behind this whole thing. Right. And then a week passes and he still doesn't, post the the art the the, the uh, interview right the third interview the third the one two and the third one the last one and i and i, I sent him an email you know what's going on and he says oh it's it got it uh it got um uh my my schedule got thick and it got pushed to the back and and we're not going to junk it and we're going to air it right right and he, he never aired it right that's the point i'm not my feelings are not hurt I never mentioned it. I, what do I care? I don't give a shit, right? It was just an afternoon. We, we got to talk. He should have aired it because I believe it has, it still has some good information. So now that he has that, right, why didn't he ever, why didn't he ever publish that? Because in that discussion, he debunks himself because he knew exactly who I was. That, con that interview happened before he was out in, out in the street there walking through Madison Square Park talking about you know how he doesn't know who Conti is that that you got to be suspicious of this guy right right so that that um interview is also in jason's hands right and you can go ahead chop it up you want to chop it up you want to make me look like a jackass I don't, what do i care i don't care 
But the point is that that you knew who, exactly who I was, right? And you and you didn't and you didn't disclose that in your rant. Motive, suspicion. It's suspicious. Why didn't you talk about why are you attacking this guy from out of nowhere? Because maybe you think that I am the real deal, that I really am an investigator, that I am connected, and that I will I will find out if you killed this girl or one of you guys killed this girl and I will find it out. Maybe that's what you're afraid of. I don't know. It, it's possible because when people are running scared and they're, and they're making shit up and they're, and they're you know, it 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 dri it drives you to to wonder what the motivation is here because again there is a dead body we believe or there is a disappeared person All right All right there's one there's one of those things that's still going on we still haven't we're waiting on an autopsy report who knows i believe it'll come back i i believe it'll come back overdosed that's what i believe i i i that's how i see it i, I just think that it's it's either accidental overdose or it's made to believe that it was an accidental overdose and it was a murder. So one, one of those, one, or, or there is no, or that's just a fake story planted inside of agencies, which I don't, I'm not really sure I believe that one. So my name is Marcus Conti, and uh, investigative journalist reporting. Peace. He stabbed you in the back, he stabbed you in the back, he stabbed you in the back. No, no. Um, what Marcus Conte is, is a person who is kind of lashing out at corruption. He doesn't understand yet who his friends are and who his enemies are. Uh, this reminds me of Jason about a year ago, where kind of lashing out in the dark at, at his friends. Um, and the part I love about Marcus Conte is his poetry, his ability to take in all that's happening around him and then being evocative with this poetry that just makes it all so clear. Uh, he talked about Thomas Paine tonight and Thomas Paine being outed. I've known Thomas or Michael Moore, uh, as you now know him, um, for over a year and, and we're going to learn who Michael Moore really is. I don't think he's related to Jenny at all, um, but uh, he did work with her in the, in the last couple of months on some on some key stories. I believe the only way to win, the only way to win is to put it all out on the line. Give everything you have. It's sort of like the uh, flag bearer. I compare this to the flag bearer in the Civil War. If you carry the flag, they used to have fist fights over who would carry the flag knowing that the Confederate sharpshooters would go for the flag bearer first. And that was probably the most likely person to die. And yet they had fistfights of who would carry the flag up the hill. That is what we need to find again, where you have a total, complete, immersive feeling of, I will give everything just to have the honor to be carrying this flag up the hill, even if it's for 10 seconds before someone else gets that honor. And that is Thomas Paine. I see that also developing and budding in Marcus Conte, the tremendous poetry, the kind of like the Dylan-esque rock poetry in, in Marcus Conte, even though it, you know, he kind of like, eh, with the, with the, this, you know, the knife in the back today. I, I, I see him as just hasn't quite seen who his friends are yet. And I, I do think there are good things, great things, great things to come for Marcus Conte.